Hello, gentle viewers, and welcome to a brand new series with Out of the Park Baseball 19. Um, I've been really excited to play this ever since they announced it, and we're going to go ahead and play. Now, you may be wondering what team are we going to be picking, and I decided go away challenge mode. We're going to do things a bit differently. We're going to play with the Real Life League, but um, let's see. I actually want to add the Independent Leagues, but I think what we'll do just to improve simming speed is we're going to leave out the other leagues next step. But I'm going to show you what's going to be different this time. Because I've never done one of these in an OOTP, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to do that for this particular series. Um, People did ask me to play the Phillies, and we will definitely be playing the Phillies in the future. But not right now. Um, The 20 to 80 is fine. I want pictures for everyone. Next... Let's see here. Uh, we will call this of Indian YT League One. Um, let's see. We're going to call... No, I don't want to call ourselves after a real major league manager. As that could create a problem. What do I want to call myself? Hmm. Doctor of Indian. There we go. Um, we'll just leave the default date of birth. I don't feel like changing it. But we're going to go into an advanced mode for a very specific reason. Good. Oh, I love this. This is really good. First of all, I can set all this stuff here that I, I really want to set. Um, buy monthly scouting reports. Yes. Keep all reports. Um, overall rating, I always want this like this. Makes it feel more scouty. Um, but this all looks good. Uh, please show me the player personality. This is all fine. <coughs> I love, by the way, that all this stuff is right up front. It's very helpful. Let's see. Teams. Let's see. Rules. All this is fine. We're not going to disable anything here. We should have a problem with incomplete minor leagues. I won't allow injured players to be drafted. Amateur draft. That sounds wonderful. Looks like it doesn't have the most recent CBA stuff, which is fine. Okay, what other settings do we need to set here? Financials. All this looks good. Options. Here we go. We're going to be playing as the Indians with an inaugural fantasy draft. Which I think will make this a lot more fun. Um... I won't force the use of the DH in the All-Star game. Um, we'll let that one do this. So, normally I would change schedule length. But it just strikes me as something that won't necessarily help. And let me explain what I mean. Um, in previous versions of Out of the Park Baseball, if you let it change schedule length, it kind of broke things. And eventually you get cravings like 26 games in a row. And that was just silly. Um, and we don't want to see that. So MVP. 
Pitchers can win it in real life. I just want a reason not to. We are going to change these, of course, to the Silver Slugger Award and the Gold Glove Award. We're not going to bother with a custom award. I think that's fine. Um, I'm going to change so you can have voted for up to 15 people per ballot. I think that'll make things a little bit more interesting. Players, anything I want to change here? I don't think so. All this looks good. Historical, that's fine. Stats and AI, definitely want all the detail. So we've enabled our inaugural fantasy draft. Let me just make sure that's still set. It is. And then actions. No, I don't want to delete the league. Okay. All right. So what this is going to do is, so the only thing we're going to have is we're going to have um, the major leagues, and then we're going to have these independent leagues, which should hopefully mean that things work pretty quickly. And we'll go ahead and start game. And now we pick the Cleveland Indians. But these will not be the Indians that you know and love. Maybe you don't love them. I love them. But they will be completely different as we begin with an inaugural draft. So that'll be what this episode covers. Um, I'm, I hopefully you've stuck with me so far to see what exactly is going to be this episode. I'm just going to do the draft in this episode. And then beginning tomorrow evening, we'll play through our very first season. Um, I apologize if there's a little bit of noise in the background. My microphone's really good at picking up um, noise. Um, and we're making dinner while my wife is making dinner while I play. So in the meantime, if you hear some noise in the background, that's probably what's happening. I've turned down my microphone volume to hopefully maybe not pick up some of the extra noise, but we'll see. I'm beginning to regret setting up the fictional character fictional pictures it's all the sabermetric stuff people who haven't played since they were nine years old think they haven't figured out i'm really tempted to hit escape to cancel if this is gonna yeah you know i'm not gonna make you guys sit there okay i might have just canceled just that particular stuff which is perfect osa will scout our players There we go. So, Doctor of Indian takes... Look at this screen. Oh, this is pretty. This is really pretty. Everything is huge. It's easy to see. I love it. But we have something to do first. We have the inaugural draft. Um, it looks like they're basing a base. I don't know actually how they're assigning the order. It might be random. Um. Do I want to play with a draft budget? I think so. I want this to be fairly evenly matched. So we actually will turn on a draft budget. 160 million for every team actually seems we could do it by city population. Oh, this is so cool. Um, we're going to leave it as a flat budget for now because I want every team to have the same chance to get the best players. And we will play with a serpentine draft. What does a serpentine draft mean, you may ask? What this means is um, we'll be playing... Basically, where the order will invert every other run. Which means the Padres and the Rays will get two picks in a row. So, with that being said... Do I want to click Assign Random Draft? This already looks like a random draft order. Because in real life, the Indians weren't 14th last year. Because they were actually the best team... They were either the best or second best team in the American League in terms of wins. So, they would be toward the bottom. So... 
it's not as exciting or as sexy to be in the dead center, and it probably means we won't get Mike Trout. But I'm okay with that. So let's continue. And we're going to sort purely by overall rating to begin with. Why are we stopping? What's happening? This is not a fantasy draft. I want everyone in the major leagues to be drafted. I see what you did. This is not what I asked for. This is what we want. We want schedule fantasy draft. We want everyone to be eligible. Now we're talking. Oh, you'll notice if it did change our draft order, um, I will go through it to 160 million budget. I think that was the fairest one. And then recalculate budgets. Oh no, whoops, it actually reset that. Recalculate player demands. There we go. Okay, so now we should have the draft that I actually expected. Oh, yeah. I just saw Giovanni Urshula's name. Okay. So let's go ahead and just do... The Angels could end up with Mike Trout. How perfect would that be? Did anyone ever call him Kid? I don't think so. We'll just draft until our first pick. Okay. I have to do it. There is no way that I, as a fan of the Indians, cannot pick Francisco Lindor. I've got to do it. He's a shortstop. He's the kind of guy you build a team around. Draft the shit out of him. Next pick. All right. So all the 80 level players are gone. So what we need to do is look at our team and figure out what we want to prioritize. We've got ourselves a good starting choice because we've got a shortstop. Now, do we want to go starting pitcher or do we want to go offense? What do we got for starting pitchers left? A Luis Severino is very tempting. Let's take a look at what he can do. Um, He's got three good pitches. He's got good control. Could be even better stuff. They added arm slots to OTP, which is supposed to make a big difference.
So, we were talking about Luis Severino, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about arm slots. <clears throat> because it's a big part of baseball that up until now has not been a part of OOTP 18. When a pitcher throws, there are several different types of pitching motions, but by far as so as the so-called three quarters. So if you imagine yourself standing straight up, if you put your hand directly above your head and like hold it up in the air, that would be considered like a one. So if you shift it slightly either to your right or your left, depending on which hand you have up, that would be called a three-quarter slot. So it's not straight out at your side. It's not straight going straight up. It's in between those. And it's by far the most common, it's by far the most common arm slot in Major League Baseball. We'll talk about some of those as we see them. Um, now, what you may not notice, I actually stepped away there for a little bit because our, our fire alarm started going off because of the bacon, which was delicious, but also a little bit, tiny bit burnt. And so it was making horrible screeching sounds. Um, so while I've been gone, I decided we're going to take Luis Severino. Our strategy is this. We've got about $160 million to build this organization, and we're going to go on the cheap in the early stages so that when other teams can't afford to get the top-notch talent, we swoop in. So Luis Severino, welcome to the Cleveland Indians. I'd really like one more outstanding pitcher, and John Gray looks like a great choice. Now, he's more of a control. Ah, here's another difference. Here we go. Sidearm. So, remember how I said if you hold your arm out at your side, it's not quite that extreme. It's slightly above that. Um, but I like the idea of getting one more super cheap pitcher, and so we will take John Gray as our third pick. And then we'll auto-draft. Now I need to start filling out the rest of our lineup. One of the hardest positions to fill is catcher. Now. <coughs> Kyle Schwarber is not a real catcher, by the way. Um... Did they add pitch framing? It would be so cool if they did, but I don't think they did. No, they just considered catcher ability. So we want what we want in a catcher is someone who provides good offense with elite defense. So let's change our view. Let's look at batting ratings. Among catchers, who is hits for the most contact? Salvador Perez is a 55. He's a good all-around hitter, but lacks a little bit in eye. And he's a pretty good catcher. So here's our question. Do we take a risk? The risk being, if we let him slide, do we think we could grab someone who might be even better? I really didn't want to go hardcore Indians. And I don't think we will. A 22... Oh, look at that batting eye. But still. Oh, I see. There is still the difference in that. That's good. I love the fact he's a great contact hitter. He's got really good power, but he's not going to draw many walks. He's another one who might be available later on. Let's go in. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to look and look at the best possible hitters we can find. Now, the idea of Yoan Moncada at second base is really tempting. Because he's got a lot of discipline, very good power, and enough contact that he should be able to make that last. Oh, it's really tempting to grab him. We'd be set up the middle for years to come. Let's do it. Let's take him. I talked myself into it. All right. 
So the best player left is Logan Forsyth. No real need for someone like that. We just got a second baseman. I think we lost out on our chance to grab um, Salvador Perez. Russell Martin would be a decent choice. What about Alex Avia? Alex Avia is not a great catcher. But he's got good power and very good discipline. I think we might take Russell Martin and have to just prioritize this as a place to get some quality prospects. Okay. Matt Chapman has tons of power. Very good third base play. He'd be a really solid choice. I think we'll take Matt Chapman too. Michael Brantley keeps falling. I think because no one else can afford him. But we're going to take a center fielder. But we might grab Brantley if he's available next round. So Albert Almora offers a an intriguing possibility. He's got really tremendous center field skills. Decent contact, decent power, and doesn't strike out a lot. That's got some value to it. What about Aaron Hicks? Hicks is a decent all-around hitter, but he doesn't have the upside that I'd like to see. Because we're going to draft not necessarily for this first season. We're drafting for all the season. So we'll, we will take Almora. Alright. We need veteran leadership. We're going to take Michael Brandt. So let's take Michael Brantley. Our first big dip into a, a high cost player. Let's see. Derek Fisher's got good power and good discipline. He'd make a really good right fielder. Yeah, let's take Derek Fisher. We're also way behind on pitchers. I think now it's I think our next couple of picks are gonna have to be pitchers, just kind of by default. Yeah, we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel already. These pitchers are by no means bad. But this is going to be a weakness of the team, I think. I wanted to see something. Is it making, if I'm making all relievers look like chumps? Okay, it's not. Reliever's not that important to me. I feel pretty confident we can grab one later on. Uh, we could grab, like, Shelby Miller. No. Some of these guys just don't throw... Just don't strike people out. I'm going to take Chase Anderson. Um... And we'll need to grab one more pitcher. I bet a lot of other teams have gone heavy on pitchers. Which is why we're kind of picking through the scraps right now. What is Chance Adams' upside? He's got really good stuff potential. And a potential wicked slider. We'll take Chase and Chance Adams. And he'll be another starter for us. Okay. Auto pick. We don't have a first baseman yet, or a right fielder. We could be like the real Indians to grab Yonder Alonso. Michael Franco. Mm. Cole Calhoun, no. There's a lot of reason to grab Miguel Cabrera here. 
He wasn't so great in 2017, but he'll be in a lot... He won't be as important. I think this is another place where we take a deep dive and we grab a new player. And we still need a right fielder. <clears throat> no. Yes, Monty Thomas, maybe, but he can't really play the field. Ben Zobrist plays everywhere. Lonnie Chisenhall is Lonnie Chisenhall. If all we cared about was quality prospects, there's a lot here to choose through, choose from. Michael Geddes. No, because you'd need to improve your contact. Give me batting potential and please give me your best contact hitters. Oh no, I don't want potential. I want now. Sorry. None of these players remaining are going to be all that fantastic. Josh Harrison is a second baseman that just so happens to play another position. Matt Kemp. He's going to be... Oh, Matt Kemp's actually not that expensive. But he also can't play right field. Cesar Puello. Good all-around hitter. Reasonable defense. I think we'll go ahead and grab him. We've at least got our starting lineup set. I oh, know it doesn't consider him a right fielder. Well, we can just move someone. That's not the end of the world. We want someone with really great stuff who's also a starting pitcher. Now, he's not going to be back anytime soon, so that makes him problematic. Shelby Miller's actually not bad, and he'll be back in two to three months. Do we have anyone like a Jesse Chavez, maybe? Our rotation is pretty terrible. I don't think there's any denying that. All right, I think what we're going to do... We've got a starting lineup. We've got a rotation. I would very much like to grab some elite prospects if we can find some. <clears throat> He'll have good stuff. He'd be a good choice. I like the idea of Sixto Sanchez, though, because he's already got the control, right? Which means he's going to be... He's a lot closer to the big leagues. I think we actually might take him... We might grab a couple of pitching prospects just so we have someone down the line. Uh, let's grab you... And I'm also going to grab Jackson Kofar. We still got loads of money. So I think now, it's now round 18. I think now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the relief pitching market. Because if I'm right, there should still be plenty of good options. Um, please give me pitching ratings. Here we go. Overall. We want someone with really good stuff who's also got pretty good control. Like a Will Harris. I like it. Let's take him. Then we sim. I'm going to grab me some Pat Neshek. We'll sim. Maybe some Ben Heller. <clears throat> Alright, now let's go after some hitting prospects. My goal, by the way, since there's like 200 rounds, I'm not going to go through everything. 
what I'm looking for now is just pure potential and hitting. And we've got quite a bit here. Nick Senzel's got a really well-rounded skill set. He would be an excellent addition to our team. Oh, sorry. So we're going to grab, I think, for a couple, three rounds, we're just going to grab prospects. That fascinate us. Christian Robinson has an insane amount of power, really good defense, great discipline. I love the sound of that. Take him. Another. I'm a huge sucker for really good contact prospects, especially if they can also play decent defense, which OB here definitely can. And then I think we'll finish our current part prospect binge with Willie Calhoun. Not to be confused with Haystacks Calhoun. Or Rory Calhoun for that matter. Let's fill out the let's fill out the bullpen a bit more. And I want pitching ratings, I want overall. A Daniel Hudson would be very attractive. Or Nate Jones. Yeah, we'll take Nate Jones. I'm looking, in case you're wondering how I'm choosing these players right now, because bullpens are so fungible, I'm focusing on high stuff and good enough control that they won't embarrass themselves. Like Sergio Romo. We're all spending a lot of, a decent amount of money on the bullpen, but it's worth it because it'll help the rotation. And we'll take Chase and Shreve just because he's so good at striking people out. Right. I would like one more elite quality hitter. And we'll find a spot for him. We'll sort by contact. Adam Lynn seems like a pretty good choice. A very good all-around hitter. Autograph. Um, are there any high, more high upside pitchers with a potential rating of 60 or above? Uh, sure. I'll just start grabbing a couple. I'll grab a couple of reliever prospects. Why not? And let's look at starting prospects specifically. I will take you both. I don't even care if you're good or not. All right, so we've gone through 31 rounds. Let's try to look for some value. Something at a position that offers both some upside. Michael Geddes is still here. And he's both a really good center fielder and a really good right fielder. Oh my God! Look how beautiful. Okay, we will we will talk more about that later, because I don't want us I don't want this episode to take too long for you. We'll take Michael Geddes. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to auto draft until next pick. Did someone take Michael Geddes? Okay, good. Can't have him. He's mine. An Andre Ethier. So he plays left and right quite well. He's got decent gap power and decent discipline. He's a good bench bat off the bench. And we're kind of filling out the back end of the bench right now. Wow, the Mets have spent a lot. Uh, we do need a second catcher. I quite like him. I don't know if he'll start necessarily, but I do quite like him. Potential rate. Oh, God, there's still so many high potential players. It's almost not even fair at this point. That we're spending most of our time and money on prospects, which will really help us out. Let's see. Juan Santana's got good power and discipline and literally nothing else, but that's still. Right now, we're playing with house money. Um, we are playing with house money.
They almost got really good potential contact. You do. And you're a catcher, so I will draft you. Um, you're a pretty good hitter. I will draft you. I hope our our prospect heavy strategy pays off. Because otherwise, we're looking in for a few questionable seasons. Okay, auto draft. And now let's try to grab. Let's see what's left. People really don't want to draft Luke Volt. Did he like run over someone's dog or something? If he's going to keep falling, I'm going to take him. I'm willing to let him prove something in my organization. Renato Nunez is injured and has very good power and very little else to recommend him. Okay. I like to take a backup catcher. For a catcher, what matters most to me is great defense. I've got a couple of 60 to choose from, actually. We might take A.J. Ellis. Yeah, we'll take A.J. Ellis. I think he's a good quality backup catcher. <clears throat> we do need a couple of utility players, so let's look at all of our infielders. Let's look at position range. And we want someone who's a really great shortstop, first and foremost. And then we do want someone who can fill in at second and third. Like an Engelb Vielma. He's a crummy hitter, but he's not here to be a great hitter. He's here to help fill some spots. I want to take a couple more utility type guys, too. A Devin Marrero? Sure. And I want... Uh, all the elite center fielders are probably going to be gone at this point. We'll take Eric Gonzalez. It wouldn't be the Indians without Eric Gonzalez on there somewhere, right? Are there interesting players left? Is the now million dollar question. I would like batting potential, please. There's still some 80s left. So we're just going to go and just keep grabbing people. When every 80 in the... Mage, in Every 80 prospect is gone, we will stop drafting them. I know we're probably getting a lot of guys that are probably extremely flawed. But at this point, there's no downside to it. And we've still spent, we've spent very little money, which gives us plenty of options. Uh, we will take Angel Solarte, too. I really like to get a couple more pitching prospects, but I think those are all gone and have been gone for quite some time. Get some relief prospects. Um, yeah, I'm willing to give you a shot. And we'll take Max Alba, too, if he's still around. Just to add another starter to our stable. So let's look at the team. We could use one more utility type shortstop dude. Could bring Johnny Peralta back to Cleveland. He can't really handle shortstop though. Giovanni Ursula, outstanding third baseman, kind of garbage everywhere else. And does Faldo Abreu might be? No. I think we will take Johnny Peralta and then just figure out what to do with him. Take a Brave, too. Maybe he'll end up being useful later on. Um, We've been through 54 players already. The thing is, there's probably still, like, fascinating hitting prospects. There's still guys in the 70s left. Ooh, I'm not touching a guy with that little contact. I don't care how good his power is. I will take Carlos Gar Vargas, though. Fine, Carlos Vargas, please. And then maybe like an Ethan Paul, and then I think we'll call this a draft. So let's finish the draft.
We went through 56 rounds. I think that's enough to build a good foundation. And then what we'll do to finish this episode is we'll take a quick look at the team we've drafted. No, I think actually we'll save that for the first proper season episode. Because I want that to be a nice meaty episode in which we go over the team in some detail. Um, and I have the feeling kind of this episode's already been kind of running a little long anyway. So I'm thinking maybe that's a good place to start. It's going to take a while to draft, by the way, because there's 270 rounds. Um, so, with 30 people picking each time, so we're probably just going to have to sit here for a little bit. Um, I think we did pretty good. I'm worried about our pitching, though. Um, we're definitely very much an offense-first team. I think I vastly underestimated how good we could find pitchers later in the draft. I think that was a bit of a strategic error. We've got a couple of good pieces to a rotation, but I've got the feeling this team's not going to be very good in the short term. We're definitely built for the long haul. I think most of you would agree with that. Like Caruso's lungs are Einstein's brain. Hmm. But we're, we're built really well at the skill positions, which means that as we're filling out the roster in seasons to come, it'll be about us spending our money intelligently. Um, and we've got enough veteran talent that we might make a run at this. I don't think we're as good as the real-life Indians. Because the real-life Indians are built around their rotation, and we just don't have one that's that good. We've got a couple of interesting pitchers, but it's mostly going to be smoke and mirrors. And it might be worthwhile to consider packaging certain players to try to trade for good pitchers. That would be interesting fantasy draft strategy, actually, which would be to corner the market on one or two different positions and then just watch as everyone just comes begging it to you, comes begging to you because you got all the shortstops for some reason. <coughs> Our bullpen is going to be surprisingly deep. Um, I did spend more money than I would normally like to, but I think it'll be worth it. I think it'll be worth it. One of the things I think I'll do off camera between episodes, I think I'm going to go ahead and set up my player views so that I can quickly see the information I need to see right away. Um, and that's also not very interesting to watch on camera. Um, do let me know in the comments if there's some aspect of the game that you want to see. I'm recording the first episode of the new series literally after this one so i won't be able to make any changes um for that episode but for monday's episode definitely i'll be able to um consider the advice the requests you have and focus on certain things um i've never once heard someone call jd martinez flacco never i don't know where these nicknames are coming from This draft's taking a long time. It's almost like there's a lot of players being drafted by a lot of teams. We might need to turn ghost players on because I don't know if all my I don't know if all the minor league teams will be full. Hmm. The first Mets player for the cycle was Jim Hickman. Was it? Was it? Connie Mack managed for a long ass friggin' time. Oh no, no, no fictional pictures. Yes. Um, no. Top 100 prospects list. We only have one, and it's Nick Senzel. Hmm. Oh, the Orioles ended up with Shohei Atani. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That's pretty hot. Ronald Acuna, Fernando Tatis Jr. Hmm. Already lots of craziness. I like it. What are my goals this season? They want me to win the World Series, acquire a hometown player, and build a team that can win a championship. Go away, Larry Dolan. Ooh, I like that. 
a lot more hyperlinks now. Um, so that'll be it for this episode. We've built ourselves a team. And now it's entirely a question of whether we can take that team to the next level. Well, that's been it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at OOTP 18. Please join me tomorrow when we'll play through our very first season with the reconstituted Cleveland Indians. It should be tons of fun. Until then, though, this has been Avindian. Please like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and comment down below. Let me know how do you think our draft went and whether you might have done something differently.